The golden age of illustration is a period of representational art that is often overshadowed by more popular, innovative, and controversial art movements of the pre-World War I era, like Cubism and Futurism. Although Golden Age artists did not produce much content we would consider new, what they did create was a combination of old and new ideas, ideals, and techniques that heavily influenced popular art and culture, as well as other artistic movements and our own modern perception of illustrative art. The Golden Age began in the late 19th century and is described as a time of unprecedented excellence in book and magazine illustration until the late 1920s or early 1930s. The development of high-speed presses, inexpensive pulp-based paper, and improved reproductive processes allowed artists to produce and export higher quality images faster with greater color range and accuracy. While these advancements encouraged artists to work on books and for magazines, the development of a wealthier middle class also created a large demand for graphic art. Luckily, with the cost of printing reduced, publishers could spend more money on artists and for illustrative work, dramatically increasing the amount of art available to the public. All of these factors allowed illustrative art to boom and integrate itself into mainstream culture. There were several movements and trends that influenced illustrators of the Golden Age, like Japanese woodblock prints, but these four had the greatest impact. The Impressionist movement of the late 19th century provided great depictions of light, stylized settings, an understanding of movement, and a look at ordinary life. Art Nouveau provided the beginnings of graphic design and emphasized good craftsmanship, anti-industrialization of art, and believed in raising the status of craft. The longer-lived arts and crafts movement felt very similarly, though they worked with simpler designs that often alluded to romantic or medieval art. The Pre-Raphaelites also revolted against industrialized art as well as what art academies were teaching. They emphasized detail, the use of bright colors, and medieval or renaissance aesthetics. Their subjects revolved around morals, nobility, and religion, but they also believed that their art should be serious, sincere, and true to nature. Golden Age artists combined these ideas and ideals to create art that was detailed but filled with simple or medieval textile patterns. They created images filled with bright colors paired against dark lines, and they also created images for stories of religious or moral nature. The anti-industrial mood from these latter three movements carried on into the Golden Age. Golden Age artists believed that machinery could be used to reduce the workload but should never compromise quality. In most Golden Age art, contrast is used in tone, color, and rendering. Industrialization and scientific advancements cause the fear of losing one's humanity or individuality, as well as a questioning of morality and religion. Mass production sparked a return to the handmade aesthetic, and the fears discussed prior caused a return to moral art and the comforts of old traditions, like detailed semi-realistic rendering. The introduction of World War I created dark undertones in art, while also pressing the question of morality, religion, and humanity. This was a dark yet exciting time, whose atmosphere is felt clearly in illustrative art. The rising popularity of photography greatly influenced Golden Age artists as well. The genre of non-fiction art was dominated by photographers, so illustrators were mainly directed to the fantastical images needed for children's books. This was not a completely negative situation, though, as the technological advances, advancements and less serious medium allowed artists to be more playful and fun with their drawings, as well as experiment with color, form, and line. Therefore, children's books were images packed with both magic and malevolence, fantasy and realism, and seriousness and whimsy. Children's books were the largest medium used by the Golden Age artists. As mentioned before, new colors could be used in printings, and full-color pages were more likely to be commissioned since they were a lot cheaper. So illustrators could be much more creative, it would take time for them to adjust and develop new techniques. As can be seen on the right, black and white illustration allowed for great detail, but the integration of color gave the forms a more solid shape and made it more interesting for the viewer. Artists now had to think about colors suitable for their text descriptions, 
as they were an accompaniment. They strove to follow the arts and crafts movements, saying, form follows function. As the popularity of specific artists and their work rose, their talents were used for a wider variety of purposes. Since their work could be exciting, eye-catching, and accessible to both young and old, it was used largely for advertisement and product design. Posters, magazine ads, and package labeling used the descriptive patterns, simplistic nature, nostalgic feelings, and colorful designs to gain attention and customers. Magazines placed illustrations for articles and ads within their pages, but the cover was the most important part. Colorful, ordinary scenes, like those on the covers of Good Housekeeping or The Cosmopolitan, were commonly used on magazines intended for women. Other magazines, like Life, would sometimes commission more imaginative or fantastical covers. Cover art usually denoted the content of the periodical, as the Christmas scene on the Christmas issue of Good Housekeeping does though they could also be unrelated and used only as a selling point. Businesses not only published advertisements in magazines, but in the form of posters on grocers' walls or marketplace stands. Jello's long ad campaign with Maxfield Parish is a good example. The government also realized how much an image could say and began commissioning artists to produce images for joining the military and buying war bonds. Placing images on a product's packaging, like those for candy boxes, art tools, or lamps, was practiced, though not as prevalent as magazine or poster advertisements. The images were good, though, for artists trying to promote themselves and get their artwork out into the world. The majority of the Golden Age was comprised with artwork revolving around text or a product. In children's books, it was a novelty, or a tool used to help children learn to read or increase their interest in reading and learning. In commercial art, though, the images were meant to inform or persuade. These purposes led to a negative perspective of illustrators and their art. Illustrations for books and magazines were not considered fine art. Their association with children, and especially their commercialized nature, separated them from what was considered fine art. Something that had a non-monetary purpose, was complex and intellectual, and was definitely not accessible to everyone. Yet, artists were proud to see their work reach such a large audience and could make a good living off of their work. However, fame and wealth encouraged more people to take up illustration, reducing its reputation even further. The number of people learning to become an illustrator increased during the Golden Age's decline, as did teachers and tools for illustrative instruction. The most popular artists, Howard Pyle, Arthur Rackham, and Maxfield Parrish had their techniques, styles, and signature aspects copied, the most famous being the specific color of blue Parrish used in his mythological nude paintings and prints. The market soon became saturated with illustrators and similar illustrations, and with it the sense of wonder and anti-industrial feel essential to the movement was lost. Arguments soon developed on why illustrations should be considered fine art. One argument was by Parrish, who said that illustrations by skillful artists told stories on their own. He soon created a series of illustrations unpaired to texts or products, but to be sold on their own as prints. These pictures used the same semi-realistic, fantastical imagery used in text-based artwork, but forced the viewer to look at context clues and create a story for the image on their own. In his argument, Parrish set a standard for what a good illustration should be, saying, I know full well the public wants a story, always wants to know more about a picture than the picture tells them, but to my mind, if a picture does not tell its own story, it's better to have the story without the picture. I couldn't tell a single thing about my illustrations because there isn't a single thing to tell. The picture tells all there is, there is nothing more. However, Parrish also saw the end of the Golden Age coming. Modern art was changing and rising in popularity, replacing representational art's place in pop art culture. Illustrative art's reputation had not changed in a positive way, still having a commercial soulless association with it. However, yet, artists tried to change, tried
tried to regain their popularity. But as Parrish commented, we are at the mercy of the public. We guess at what they will like, and, as we all do, we guess wrong about half the time. The golden age of illustration led to the development of a lot of great things, like comic books, animated movies, modern graphic design, and fantasy novels for adults. Their fantastical illustrations have recently regained popularity, still influencing our modern stylistic choices, interests in fairy tales and dark stories, and still remind us of what a good illustration may be. If you'd like to see more artwork from the Golden Age of Illustration, I recommend you look up these five artists as they are my favorites, and if you'd like to learn more, you could visit these websites.